world. But God will give you whatever you need, but it is according to your capacity. Amen. And so you've got to understand during this time of ordination that God wants those who have been ordained to understand that God wants you to increase your capacity. Amen. God doesn't prefer Sally over Sue. He doesn't prefer Matthew over James. He's not a respecter of persons. Don't ever look at God and say, God, why did you bless them more than you bless me? Why did you do more for them than you did for me? You've got to understand God will only give you according to your capacity. Somebody say, Lord, increase my capacity. Increase my capacity. Increase my capacity. God cannot give you millions if you've got a capacity for thousands. He cannot give you 200 if your capacity is 100. God is not a respecter of persons. When you see dunamis in, in Nigeria with 100,000 people, you've got to understand he has built the capacity for that. And so you've got to understand God wants us to begin to increase our capacity so that we can increase in the blessing. We, we, we are believing God. Let me just say this and you've got to understand God cannot use you until he increases your capacity. That's why when Moses was born, God had to get him out of the slave house and put him in the palace in the king's house because everybody in the slave house had a slave mentality and God said if I'm going to use anybody to get these people out of Egypt my capacity so this oil can work for me so we hear a knock on the door Jones is on the ground Ian goes and opens the door two men walk in they are carrying backpacks 
they walk in and they say, what the blankety blank is going on? <laughs> Very unchristian language. And then I said, I'm Pastor Jimmy, this one, uh, I was a pastor then, I'm apostle now, bless God. But I said, I'm Pastor Jimmy, this one is, this one is uh, Jones and he has given his life to Jesus, we are just praying for him. And while he's saying this, he, I'm telling him this, he's bringing his bag out and he's opening his bag. And he pulls out an AK-47 assault rifle. <coughs> His friend pulls out a Barretta, a pistol, and he cocks the gun. He says, what are you doing to him? So me, I backed off. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. <laughs> so the guy with the machine gun was holding it. And the other guy with the pistol went and knelt down and he took his finger and put his finger on his head like this. And he started saying what? And Jones' body started going like this. He was putting the demons back. Oh. I stood there and let me tell you, thank God because I fasted the night before. Yes. Because when you fast, you create capacity. Amen. The Holy Ghost comes. And when he comes, he comes with boldness. The Bible says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. I say the righteous are as what? Bold as a lion. I stood there by faith. And let me tell you, I never saw any angels there. But I say this by faith. I said you cannot do that. Because there is an angel of the Lord here and an angel of the Lord here. I did not see any angels. I was speaking by faith. The moment I said that, their eyes were open. They saw an angel right where I pointed. Come on, somebody. They looked and they said, hey, hey. And I became even more bold. I said, angels of the Lord. Restrain them in Jesus' name. I saw this man's hands going like this. All the way to their back. I said, angel of the Lord, throw them out of the house. They started going back, 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 back to the door. The door opened by itself. They were thrown out and the door shut. Come on, somebody. Capacity. Hallelujah. There is a level. The Bible says he shall give his angels charge over you. There is a level of intercession that God assigns angels who will war for you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No kingdom raised against you shall be able to stand. For greater is he who is on the inside of you than he who is in the world. The reason why people are caught by a bullet is because they don't have capacity. One time they tried to kill Jesus. He preached his first sermon. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. They didn't like his message. They grabbed him. They said, we're going to throw you off of a cliff. Can you imagine preaching your first sermon? And they want to throw you off of a cliff. The Bible says Jesus turned around and he walked through them. And he went his way. Why? Because he had the capacity to decide when he would die. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 91, it says, with the long life, will I satisfy you. Amen. And show you my salvation. Amen. Oh, there is a place you can get with God whereby you decide when you will leave this earth. Amen. Nothing can touch you, nothing can harm you, nothing can kill you Amen. before your time. Amen. Even Jesus, nobody killed him. He said, nobody takes my life. I lay it down. Come on, somebody. He was in a place where he was unkillable. Amen. Come on, somebody. God is live go out, I want to prophesy to some Daniels who may find themselves in the lion's den and the lions will become like a mattress and you can go to sleep. I want to prophesy right now to some Shadrach, Meshach, and a Pentecost who can step into the fire and not be burned by the fire. Let me tell you, there is a dimension where you become indestructible. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. You gotta understand 
Samson had an anointing upon him. One time he was in a city and they blocked him in the city. He carried the gates of the city all the way to the top of the hill and he dropped the gates there the way times and times and times. Why? Because there was a capacity that God had given him. You cannot be tied, you cannot be bound, you cannot be hindered. When that oil comes upon you, every Goliath must come down. It doesn't matter how short you are. It doesn't matter if you don't know how to use the sword and Saul's armor cannot fit you properly. God can take your three to five stones and your slingshot and he can bring down everything that is challenging the armors of God. Amen. Come on somebody. Somebody say I need some oil. I need some oil. Verse 1 to 3. I'm going to close with this. The Bible tells us, Sing, O barren, you who have not born, break forth into singing. And cry aloud, you who have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. And large the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling do not spare look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor create capacity it says lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes for you shall expand to the right I came to prophesy to somebody you are about to expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations Amen. and make the desolate cities inhabited. Amen. Come on somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says this. This is the third point. How you can create capacity. And I'm going to close with this one. The Bible says sing or barren. Mm. Somebody say sing. 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 It is important to understand that every time you learn to praise God and to worship God, even in the face of opposition, mm. your praise creates capacity. Mm. It creates a room for God to move. Amen. Now, most people, when they're barren, they have got a million reasons to complain. Yeah. But the Bible is saying, don't complain. It says, sing. Come on, somebody. Amen. You may not have what it takes, but sing. You may not have the money that you need, but sing. You may not have the house that you're looking for, but sing. Amen. You may not have the job that you need, but sing. Amen. Your ministry may be struggling, but sing. Hallelujah. People may have left you, but sing. Amen. Your wife may be struggling, but sing. Amen. Your husband may have left you, but sing. Sing, Amen. sing, sing. Sing, O Barry. Sing, O Barry. You may not have any money in your bank account, but you've got to understand in the midnight hour when you're going through tragedy and going through trials and going through tribulation, that is the time to open your mouth and begin to give God praise. Why? Because a closed mouth is a closed destiny. If the devil can shut you up, he can keep your destiny. Somebody open your mouth and say, shout Jesus! Because when you find yourself in the worst situation, that's the time when you need to create capacity for your deliverance. Amen. Capacity for your deliverance Amen. is created when you open your mouth and you begin to worship. Because God needs capacity to move. He needs a landing spot. He needs an airport in your life. He needs some space in order to manifest himself. The Bible tells us that he is enthroned in the praises of his people. Every time you begin to praise and you begin to worship, you are creating capacity for Jesus. You are creating capacity for the Heavenly Father. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits. So every time you want to invite him to come into your situation, you must create a habitation for him. Habitation. He inhabits the praises of his people. And that is why the Bible tells us that at midnight, Paul and Silas, they were bleeding on their backs, their hands were tied, their feet were tied, but at midnight they prayed and they praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I've spoken about prayer. I've spoken about fasting. Now I'm talking about praise. All these are weapons that God can use to create capacity because he inhabits the praises of his people. So when they began to pray,
pray. And they were praising. They didn't keep their mouth shut. The other prisoners had them. What they were doing is they were inviting God into their prison. Amen. Come on, somebody. They were saying, God, come into my situation. Come into my prison. Come into my problem. Come into my marriage issues. Come into my church. Come into my ministry. Come into my finances. You've got to learn to create capacity for God to show up. Hallelujah. The Bible says as they were praising, all of a sudden there was enough room that was created and God stepped into the place. And the Bible says it was shaken and the prison doors were open. Hallelujah. There is power in praise. I said there is power in praise. When you learn to praise God, God won't just touch you. He will touch your family. Come on, somebody. That means if he's bringing you out, he will bring them out. When he sets you free, he will set them free. Your neighborhood can be touched by your praise. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That means your auntie is coming out. Your uncle is coming out. Your children are coming out. God is looking for somebody to praise him so he can release generational blessings. As for me and my house. Oh, yeah, mama. And so they slept all night 
and that in the morning they woke up and had their winter mix and their coffee and their conflicts the meeting was starting at 9 a.m. and so Jesus was still up there praying he had not come down because he was a little bit late so they started the meeting and the first person to come was a man with a child who was vexed with a demon the Bible says when this child was brought in front of them, they asked each other, what did Jesus do? Do you remember what he did? Okay, you go first. And so they're looking at the first child. In the name, that demon will say, I'm not leaving. I'm not coming out. They said, come out. I'm not coming out. Come out. I'm not coming out. I'm seeing them struggling and struggling and struggling. Finally, one of them sees Jesus coming down the hill and says, Oh my God, thank God, he's here. He can rescue us. <laughs> Jesus shows up and he says, Bring the child to me. He says, Demon, come out of that child. The demon immediately leaves. Those disciples now have got a question. Yeah. They have a question. They don't want to ask the question during the meeting because they don't know what Jesus might say. He might rebuke them for sleeping all night when they should have been praying all night. Watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. Shakanda Naboko Sata. So after the meeting was finished, they went and sat down and they were eating some food and drinking some juice and enjoying themselves. And one of them came and said, Jesus, why could we not cast that demon out? And Jesus said, this kind, somebody say this kind. Go if not out by, by what? Prayer and fasting. Because there are different kinds of devils. The Bible tells us about principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. When you deal with principalities and powers, you can eat McDonald's, you can eat KFC, you can eat some pizza, go and tell them come out and they will come out. But when you deal with rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, you better make sure your prayer is backed up in your fasting. The reason why they could not cast the demon out is because they did not have capacity. Oh, somebody say, increase my capacity. One thing you need to understand is that fasting will increase your capacity. It will increase your capacity. Why? Because fasting turns your prayer into warfare. Yeah. The Bible tells us that the, that the man by the name of Daniel, he saw a vision he did not understand. So he said, I'm going to pray and ask God to tell me what this vision means. So he began to pray. And when he prayed, he never saw an answer. And when he never saw an answer, he decided, I'm not just going to say, okay, maybe it's not my time. Maybe God is busy somewhere. No, he said, I'm not going to eat until I get my breakthrough. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. What was Daniel doing? He was increasing his capacity. Why? Because you've got to understand, when you're dealing with the principality, with, with, the, with the rulers of this of darkness of this world and the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places those are high ranking devils and demons yeah. that have the ability and power to arrest an angel mm -hmm. yeah. 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 hallelujah mm. because you've got to understand the moment Daniel prayed God in heaven sent the answer but he sent the answer through a normal angel Every time you pray without fasting, normal angels are released. But if you add fasting to your prayer, then your prayer becomes warfare. That means that God has to now call for the warning angels. Come on, somebody. How many of you know not all angels are the same? There are some warring angels in heaven who are specifically bred for battle. The moment he started to fast, that angel was held captive in that second heaven. He was held captive. He was trying to fight with your miracle, with your breakthrough to bring to you. Every time you see delay in your life, it's because there is no capacity to break through for you. So when he began to fast, he went five days, 10 days, 20 days, 21st day, Michael was released from heaven and he came and he pulled out his flaming sword and he started killing devils and demons and he rescued that angel and they broke through and they came down. Ah. The 
Bible says when that angel appeared, he said to Daniel, Daniel, from the day, from that day number one, oh. when you prayed, God had your prayer and he sent the answer. But the evil prince of Persia withstood me for 21 days. But thank God, Daniel, you added fasting to your prayer because when you did that, there were some warring angels that were released. Amen. Some archangels were released and I was able to break through and get to you. There's certain breakthroughs you pray for. It's not that God did not answer. He answered. But we did not have the capacity to release angels with our intercession. Fasting turns your prayer into spiritual warfare. Somebody say increase my capacity. Increase my capacity. So if you don't see your breakthrough the first day, first second day. If you don't see the second day, go third day. If you don't see the third day, go fourth day. If you don't see the fourth day, go fifth day. Let me tell you, as you continue to press in, your breakthrough is about to come. Hallelujah. God is not the issue. There is a demonic realm around this earth that we are contending with. And we have to pray that God gives us an open heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Most people, most men and women of God, we are working in places and we have not built capacity to take dominion. Why? Because there are principalities over those places and over those locations. And if we don't learn to add fasting to our prayer, we may never have the ability to take over Amen. those territories. Amen. I was preaching some years ago in Kenya. When I started, but this is back in early 2000s, I, I went to a, a market. Some of you may know that market called Gikomba, one of the largest open air markets in Africa. And some business people there said, we want to hear the gospel, but we're too busy here working. We can't go to the city for lunch hour service, you know, as Africans. They said, we want to build a stage so that we can be able to have this, this service every lunch hour. And so one person said, uh, came and, invite, and, and, and recommended me to them. And they said, this guy can come and preach. And so they invited me. And I went there and I preached Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, from 12 to 1.30 at lunchtime. And I would go there. And I, let me tell you, I preached there for four years, every week, almost every week for four years. We saw revival and we saw breakthroughs and we saw miracles in that place. Amen. One day I was standing there. I got up and I prepared myself to go and pray and go and preach. And when I got there, my interpreter, Pastor Yen, he's a man of God that interpreted for me and is such a blessing. So he was interpreting for me. And as I was interpreting for me, there was a man that came into the meeting. I saw him walking and I saw him sitting there. I made an altar call afterwards and this man got up and he walked all the way to the altar and he gave his heart to Jesus. I said to him, young man, how did you know about this meeting? He said, I was at home. I'm a drug addict. I am a, I'm a heroin addict. I'm a cocaine addict. He said, I was tired of my life. I wanted to kill myself. So what I did is I took a rope and I put it around the beam of my house. And I was going to put the, the rope around my neck and hang myself. And as I put the rope around my neck, I had a voice speaking to me from heaven. This voice said, do not take your life. But rather go to that man who is preaching. He's going to help you. He come on somebody. He removed the rope from his neck and he jumped down. I was preaching with loudspeakers far away so he could hear me faintly. He walked through the market and he came to where I was preaching and that's when I saw him arrive. He came forward and he gave his heart to Jesus. Then he said to me, man of God, you have blessed me so much. You have blessed my life so much. Can you come to my house? I just want to make you a cup of tea and bless you. So being a good pastor, I said, okay, I'm going to go to this man's house and we're going to have some coffee. So I said, Ian, let's go to his house. We can have a coffee. So we went to his house and he was in there already had gone ahead of us and he was boiling some water in the kettle, boiling water. As soon as we got in, he looked at us and he said, please sit down. I am so excited, so happy that you are here. You are such a blessing to me, man of God. You are such a blessing to me. You have done so much. I'm, I'm and then all of a sudden, he looked at us and his face changed. And he said, who invited you to my house? <laughs> he said, get up from here and get out of my house. 
I've got power. I can pick you up and throw you against the rock, the, the wall. Then all of a sudden he turns and says, Oh, I'm so happy. You are here, Pastor. Oh, thank God for you. Your ministry has been a blessing to me. I immediately discerned something was wrong. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Then I sat there, and me and Pastor Yen, I said, when this guy comes back, I will talk to him. Then this person, oh, I'm so happy. Thank you for coming to my house. Then he started to manifest again. I said, who are you? Immediately his face turned and his voice shifted and he began to growl. He said, my name is Deville and he belongs to us. You have no authority. I said to Ian, my interpreter, I said, forget the tea and the coffee and the croissant. Come on, somebody. Put that down. We need to deal with Sodom and Gomorrah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So I said, Ian, you stand there. I stand here. We deal with this devil. I said in the name of Jesus, come out of it. That devil said no. I said you better come out now. The devil said no, I'm not coming out. I said you come out now in Jesus name. That devil said I'm not coming out. Six hours later, I was tired. <laughs> the demon was tired. I was saying come out. The demon was saying no. It was seven o'clock. I said to the devil, devil, I bind you in Jesus' name. Don't kill him overnight. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. I went home. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I said, Hallelujah. Amen. I went home. I got home. My mom had prepared food. I was 18 years old around there. So I was still staying at home. My mom prepared a nice dinner. I sat down. I moved. Oh, praise God. Some, some sacks and all this good food. I'm eating this food. I'm enjoying myself. My stomach is full. I go to the room and I lay down. I have a shower. I lay down and I go to sleep. Next time I wake up in the morning, there's some nice sausage there and some, some chapatis there and some tea. I eat some of that and I'm having my breakfast and I get myself ready. I start praying for my meeting. Shaka Talabande. Lord, what do you want me to preach to Day. God tell me what do you want me to preach 11 o'clock I get in the bus and I travel and I go down to where I'm going to start preaching at 12 o'clock and at 12 o'clock Ian is there waiting for me we have a powerful service I preach and God moves the signs and wonders God starts doing stuff after the meeting I said to Ian Ian we are going back to John's house <laughs> hallelujah Amen. John said okay we did seven hours yesterday we're gonna go again so we went to John's house. As soon as we walk inside the door, ah! Demons manifesting. He was growling at us. You have come back. I will cut you. I'll kill you. We will destroy you. We know we will finish you. I'm saying, come out of him. No, I'm not coming out. Come out of him. No, I'm not coming out. Come out of him. No, I'm not coming out. Seven hours later, <laughs> I was tired. Amen. The devil was tired. I said to the devil, Devil, I bind you. Don't kill him overnight. I will see you in the morning. True story. I went home. When I went home, my mom had cooked my favorite food. I walked in, I said, Mom, I don't even want to see the kitchen. I'm going straight to my room. I'm going to my room. I closed the door. I got down on my knees and I started praying. I prayed. I said, I'm not eating. My mom came and knocked the door, sent my brother to come and knock the door, trying to get me to go. And I said, no, I'm not eating. I'm not eating. I knelt down and I started to pray. Somebody said, increase my capacity. Increase my capacity. Increase my capacity. This kind goes not out, but by prayer and fasting. I started praying 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, midnight, Ambo Koshata, Kanda Kaposata, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, I felt something like a blanket come over me. I got up and I opened my eyes because I thought somebody was in the room. It was very real. I felt it physically. I got up and I was looking around. What was that? I thought it was cobwebs or something because I cannot see anything. I stood up. 
And I said, I've got it. I've got it. Let me tell you. If you don't get that which is from above upon you, you will always be a victim of that which is around you. I went before God. I said, God, you must put upon me that which is from above because I'm tired of being a victim of that which is around me. Give me some oil. Let me increase my capacity. I went to sleep around 5 a.m. I only had three, four hours sleep. I woke up and my breakfast was there. I stood up and I left. I did not touch breakfast. I got up, rabaka, ta, 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 ta. 11 o'clock, I went to the meeting. The meeting started, the worship team was praying. I got up and I preached a powerful message. I said to Pastor Ian afterwards, my interpreter, I said, we are going to Jones' house. Ian said, no. No. He said, this one we just pray by faith. We receive by faith. It is done. Just leave it. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. That is how we pray when we have no capacity. We give up before we see our miracles. There's a time you have to keep praying until you see the clown like that of a man's hand. You've got to pray until you see something. Come on, somebody. Don't stop praying until you see a change. If it doesn't happen the first time, tell, pray again. And then tell your servant, go and look. Third time, go and look. Fourth time, go and look. If it doesn't happen the first time, second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, seventh time, you will see the cloud like that of a man's hand. Because you have to understand that there is a blessing that God has released and only capacity can break it through from that dimension into this dimension Hallelujah. remember what Elijah, Elijah said he said I hear the sound of abundance of rain some of you may have prophetic words that you have had but how do you go from hearing to seeing it somebody say you've got to pray shut the door shut the door increase your capacity so he came reluctantly we went all the way and I knocked on the door and when I knocked on the door, John said, come in. I went inside and as soon as I walked in, he started screaming, ah, he's got all the power. Jesus has given him power. He, we have to do what he tells us to do. Yeah. Let me tell you, it did not take five minutes. I stepped in there and the demons were talking amongst themselves. And one of them says, Jesus is standing behind him and he's got his hands on his shoulder. Whatever he tells us to do, we must do. I said, devil, come out. The first one said, my name is devil, I'm coming out. He came out. The second one called his name and he came out. The next one gave his name and came out. The next one gave his name and came out. All these demons were coming out of the man. Every one of them. A greater capacity. A greater capacity. Lay hands on them right now. Greater capacity. Receive it right now. Receive greater capacity. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Greater capacity, greater capacity. That is it, that's it, that's it. Release, 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 release. In the name of Jesus, greater capacity. From today, oh, shut up, shut up. Yokes are gonna break, chains are gonna break. Capacity. It is flowing right now. It is flowing right now. It is flowing right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus, the power can take a man of Kosata. Me pande kesete. Capacity is increasing. A candle of John of Kosete. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, let it be so. Let it be so. Let it be so. Let it be so. Let it be so.
she coming now? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. About empowerment 
empowerment, 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 empowerment. And I feel like you're like a Joseph in Egypt. God, in this nation, the African people in this land, you shall empower them to flow like Joseph. Joseph was a foreigner, yet God raised him in a foreign land and put him number two to Pharaoh. And God is saying there's an anointing that is releasing upon this couple for empowerment. You shall empower God's people. I see empowerment and anointing for empowerment coming upon you. And I see even almost like in the future, in the coming days, you will be having empowerment summits where people will come together to be empowered. I'm seeing God giving you revelation even in the area of economic empowerment. In the arena of finance, God is, has released something significant. Because I see God causing you to increase the capacity of God's people that they will come out of slavery in their mind, in their mind, a teaching anointing. Line upon line, precept upon precept, you will bring them out of Egypt. You will bring them out of the bondage. And as they come out, they will come out with their pockets full. They will come out with resources. They will come out with the presence of God. They will I see you forming prayer houses. Prayer houses. I see people coming around you who you're going to empower and inspire to pray and to intercede. It's almost like there's a, there's a prayer warrior anointed that rests upon you. From today, you shall raise up fire houses. Fire houses of intercession. 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 Out. 
please, let your mouth be open when God wants you to speak. Don't be afraid of people. Get it again. In fullness. Receive it in fullness. In the name of Jesus. And everybody around you, in Jesus' mighty name. It's not about the number. God brings people. You're going to work with those that the Lord has given you. If you want more, you'll bring more. You just do the work. Come on, Tasha, you can see something still into that. that. Just, yeah, touch it. Get it, get it. It's just, it's need to come here, to here, so that you can speak it. That one is in you, but you need to speak it. The prophets don't stay quiet. They are there to speak. Amen. Now open that one. Open, 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 open it. Yes, I'll open it. Hey, hey, can I go? Yeah, The spirit of the God. He laid that hand on the God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May the source touch you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the servants that you have appointed into this city. Yes. And we come together as your anointed one, supporting the ministry and standing together with them in the name of Jesus. That together, O oh Lord Almighty, that every doing of the demonic world into the city. Father, I know you look for one so that a city can be saved. And these are more than one here. So we pray that grace and favor fall upon Prince and Tullis, that they gain more territory and territories for the sake of your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm also seeing somebody else with the throat throat. Just problem with your, with your throat right now. Healing is coming. God is touching you. He's bringing healing in your body. In the name of Jesus, healing is coming right now. Just receive your miracle. Receive your healing touch in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody that's been struggling with a persistent sore throat right now. Healing is coming. Receive your miracle in Jesus' mighty name. I see somebody else that's been struggling in your dreams. It's almost like there's been a demonic attack in the area of dreams. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray right now that you're rescuing your child. You're rescuing your people in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that there's deliverance right now. Deliverance right now. Deliverance right now. Deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. If you dream that you are losing your wallet, you're, you can't find your wallet, you need to pray for your finance. Mm. Your finance. Yeah. If you are dreaming you are losing your phone, you don't know where your phone is, you need to pray for your prayer life. Amen. Father God, I pray right now mm. that those who have been targeted by the enemy, mm. there is rescue coming from yeah. them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rescue coming for them. Rescue coming for them. In the mighty name of Jesus.